Welcome to Wetpixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Wetpixel, and we'd like to thank Naughty Cam for sponsoring this episode today. Naughty Cam have a huge range of housings, ports, um, accessories, and some fantastic water contact optics. Please head on over to naughtycam.com to check out what they do. I'm really happy to be joined by regular contributor Alex Mustard. Hi, Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. <laughs> I'm afraid. I think I'm wearing the wrong kind of t-shirt today. You're, you're, you're not. You're not. You're, you're kind of, I was going to say you're the headless horseman, but it's the other way around. You're the bodiless horseman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bodiless photographer. Just about a background screen with a headless person <laughs> with, a, with a head under their hand, arm, or something. I, I think um, if if I'm going to keep my sanity, Alex, I think you're going to need to change your t-shirt. Yeah, no, I'm going to go and change. I thought I'd just stay like this because it made me laugh. It might make you laugh. It certainly did. Right, we'll see you in a minute. Oh, Alex, you're back. A quick wardrobe change, I see. Um... <laughs> yeah, I've only got one green t-shirt. It's stupid of me to wear it when uh, we were going to record one of these. I think it was hilarious. Um, right, and um, we both, well, we haven't seen each other for quite a long time because we've both been busy traveling, which is, um, of course, great. Yeah, I've been um, up to Cape and Ray, and you were uh, away in Mexico, and then yeah, you were in the yeah. Red Sea, and then, then you, you know, you left there just before I got yeah. over there. I, I'm just kept... feeling you're avoiding me. <laughs> yeah, carefully avoiding each other, yeah. I was, I was uh, always thinking of you over there, because I don't know if you've ever seen the boat, but there's a boat that runs out of charm called King Adam. There is, So indeed. I was going to say, hello, King Adam, because every yeah, time yeah. I see it, I always think of you. We had there was uh, we had two Adams on the boat on one of our on, on my first uh, Red Sea uh, trip, um, and so we, and King Adam was around, so there was a bit of a dispute about who was King Adam. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> there's another one called um, there's a well known charm boat called Eleonora, um, which is my wife's name. So yeah. I'm always on the lookout for the um, for King Adam and Eleonora <laughs> out on the water. Excellent. Well, there we go. But obviously, having been out travelling again, which is which is great. Um, I think we've both come back with some ideas and thoughts about some of the about photography and, and equipment and mm. ideas and so on. So, 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 so I thought that that would probably be a really good place to start, Alex. I know we we were chatting briefly, and, and you mentioned that um, you were thinking about flash triggers. So so yeah. so I think that's a good place to start, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's quite an interesting one because I think you know pretty much. The great majority of underwater photographers have transitioned now to using fiber optics. Yeah. And most of the popular cameras now don't have pop up flash or built in flashes with them, you know, sort of at the high end. Yep. Um, I think the flash guns are super reliable now. And yep. so everyone is sort of reliant on these flash triggers. And, you know, generally, you know, they're not as I think they've probably now become the kind of the least reliable item in the in the in the agenda. Um, right. I think people have, have migrated away from some of the flash guns that have been quite unreliable in the last few years. Um, and, you know, with, you know, all the popular cameras, everything from D500, you know, well, all the Nikons, all the Canons, all the Sonys, SLR or mirrorless all require flash triggers now. Yep. Um, yep. And it's become a real requirement. And I feel like they're becoming a bit of a weak link in otherwise pretty much bulletproof gear. Yeah. And I think the issue that I have is that nobody carries spare flash triggers because the all singing or dancing ones that we want to use the ones with you know ttl and high speed sync and rear curtain flash and yep. enabling all those features depending on your camera um and your strobes um for you are really quite expensive certainly yep. for what they physically are yep. and it means that people don't buy don't want to buy two for obvious reasons and yeah and that's kind of makes it slightly more frustrating because you're on a trip and you know, you know, one of the things I like about running workshops is you get a fantastic insight into underwater photography gear because you have, in the case of, you know, in the, over the course of a week or two, you have oh. a big group of photographers doing lots of dives. Yeah. So, you know, you get to see more dives than I would do myself in yeah. three or four years yeah. um, in a very short space of time. So it gives you a great impression over what's reliable and what's not. And because I'm not a dealer, I can be all honest about it because obviously the dealer response to any problem is, oh, we've never had that before. You know, yeah. even when they've got a, a, you know, a back room full of broken bits, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're never keen to admit that it's a common fault. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I think that that's, it was, and I just found on, on this particular two week trip, we had a lot of issues with flash triggers. Now, when I say a lot, I don't mean, you know, there was nobody really who ended up being unable to shoot. There was one person who was reduced to using no flash for a couple of days. Um, and we had enough bits and pieces on the boat with split cables and all sorts of other solutions to keep everyone shooting. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it, it's, it, you know, I think a lot of those people, had they been away on their own on a trip, would have ended up out of action. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it wasn't, you know, you know, a pandemic or anything across the boat. It was, you know, just a few people. But I think it's it's something that we, we need to talk about as a community. And yeah. I think a couple of the things I would, I would say is, first of all, it wasn't one problem. And, you know, there was, you know, lots of you know, different people affected at different times, you know, Sometimes it was fiber optic cables being damaged, and you know that that happens. You know yes. they are. I think the failure rate with fiber optics is about the same with as with electronic cables. Yep. But the failures are different, and yep. the fiber optics are generally easier to fix. Yep. So I think they're a good thing. Um, there are a lot of battery issues with the the triggers. Yep. Um, I think particularly some of the newer ones, they've gone to smaller and smaller batteries, and the battery life is is getting quite critical. Yep. And what compounds that problem? Is that there are, and this is not the fault of anyone who makes the triggers. There are a lot of bad, um, you know, um, those little small batteries, little pen, yeah. um, you know, um, coin, coin cells. Batteries. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of bad ones on the market, and you know, yeah. we had several occasions on the trip where someone's, you know, flash trigger ran out of batteries, and they're like, "Oh no, no, it's fine. I've got my spare batteries. Take them out, carefully put them in, um, and it, it doesn't work, or it works for a dive, and then they're flat again." Yeah. And 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 it was, and that seemed to be linked to bad batteries or you know people maybe been carrying the batteries around too long but i think yeah. there are quite a lot of dodgy batteries on sale particularly if you buy them from you know sort of non-specialist retailers and i know you've talked in the past about buying batteries from specialist battery suppliers as yeah. opposed to your favorite online shop you know yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i think i think the other i mean going, going slightly back is, is is it's not only a matter of reliability um with the boards, it's also this issue that you know if you have a flood or even and and this is some of the boards are quite exposed. It depends on where yeah. they're located in the housing. You know, drop a seawater on that on the printed circuit board, and and it, it's well, you know, it may or may not survive. And this is this is something that can happen just as a as a, a byproduct of hanging around the sea a lot. So so I mean, first of all, obviously we need to take more care around those boards as well, making sure we don't drop seawater in them. But you know, in the unlikely event of, a, of, of some kind of really, even a relatively minor flood, if the water gets into that board, it's toast. And this again goes back to this idea of, of having a, 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 a backup plan, basically, of some description that, that would allow you to, to basically swap something out or to create another way of treating your strobes that will, that will allow you to keep shooting. I, I absolutely agree, I think. Yeah, I think you've hit on a really, really important point there with the exposed nature of the boards and, and the fact that even without a flood, you know, sometimes, you know, you open the housing and, you know, you have to open the housing and there's, you know, um, there's water on the housing and, you know, maybe something goes in, you know, you dry it carefully and yep. there's still water in the o-ring. You can't dry the o-ring before you open it and maybe... Yep. The, you know, the, pulling the the back of the housing off, it just sprays a droplet in the wrong place. Or yeah, yeah. you know, if you're not lucky like me and you have hair, you never know; it might still be wet. You know, a drop can fall off. So we we all know you shave your head like that just so the yeah, water doesn't drop in your housing. Alex, for underwater <laughs> photography, yeah, None yeah. Of those issues. No hair in the O rings. No yeah, yeah. dripping in the housing. Yeah, yeah. Just just luckiness. Um, <laughs> I, I just finally on on sort of failures, and then there were there are you know physical failures. You know, in that you know. There's some delicate, you know, small, ca you know, wires going from boards to LEDs and things like that, and eventually things can break. We even had one that seemed to be the issue was the hot shoe, and it was a really strange issue, and it was the only one we couldn't fix. Um, and that one, you could trigger the flash guns with by shorting out the hot shoe. You could just get, you know, a little metal Allen key yeah. and short the hot shoe. The flashes would fire. But yeah. whatever camera we attached to that hot shoe, we couldn't make it fire. You know, so, we tried loads and loads of camera bodies, and no one's camera could make the hot shoe fire, but you could short it out. And, you know, what the hell that one was, who knows? But that one was the only one that actually meant that that photographer had to finish the trip shooting available light because we, yeah. we had no – and it just – you know, it wasn't a pandemic by any means. Only that one photographer out of, you know, 40 photographers missed two dives. You know, so out of kind of a 1,000 dives we did across the group over the two weeks – you know, it was, you know, a couple of dives affected. I'm talking about a very low rate. But I think like you were hinting at before, I think the solution is somebody needs to make for the market a backup flash trigger. Yep. So you buy the expensive all singing or dancing one as your main flash trigger. And then you have a completely redundant second flash trigger that's not being sold for several hundred, you know, pounds or dollars. You know, it's it's retailing at sort of a hundred dollars. It's you know simple, manual. Can't do TTL. Can't do high speed sync. Can't do rear curtain sync. It's just a simple flash figure that allows you to keep shooting in the field. 
Um, and then you still take your spare batteries and you, you take a few spares and things. And I think that would be a really nice product to see being widespread on the market and one that a lot of photographers are carrying around to both rescue their trip and also rescue a friend's trip should there be a problem. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, um, the, the this is almost a hark back to the old days of the, the electrical connections. You know, there were there's certainly, yes, you could get all, high, all, all very complicated um, um, TTL boards installed in housing, but the majority of them were pretty straightforward, really. You know, it was, it was out of hot shoe, connected, fired the strobes. It wasn't it wasn't very complicated. And that, that was a, a relatively cheap component, and, you know, you could afford to carry a spare. Mm. Um, and and I, I think that would be a really good idea to have something that's similar to that, you know, just a very straightforward board that basically just says, right, press the trigger, LEDs flash, strobes fire. <laughs> yeah. no, nothing more complicated than that. Mm. Um, and have that in there as a backup. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, yeah. Alex. Yeah, no, I think it's something, yeah, just, you know, and it's why it's so great to be back out in the field and, and getting that real, you know, sort of cutting, you know, on the coal face experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's wonderful. Um, thank you, Alex. I'm sure your, your pictures will be surfacing on social media soon. Um, where can people see them on Instagram? Um, my Instagram handle is, it's a while since we've done it. <laughs> I, it I think it's Alex Mustard One on yeah, Instagram. You're a, I'm sure but you're But if Alex you type my name in, I think you find me pretty quickly. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So check out Alex. Um, he'll be, uh, I'm, I'm giving him a poke here. I'm saying, so you need to start processing some pictures. Oh, yeah, I've got too many deadlines. Maybe next week before I get to go to Scotland. Good. All right. Okay. So anyway, lovely to see you again, Alex. Um, and thanks again to Nautica for sponsoring this episode. Um, we need our sponsor support to make these episodes, so we, we very much appreciate it. Thanks to you all for watching. Please feel free to drop us a like or add any comments or suggestions in the comments section below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.